Hello and welcome to Up at Noon, live-ish at 5-ish. I'm Brian Altano. With me is Max Scoville. You're lying. We're not live. We're recording this. It's a, it's a video cassette that you can watch at home, but we cannot read the chat. I'm sorry. I wonder how much of the show we could actually fit on a video cassette. That would be such a waste of a video cassette. The only reason <laughs> the show makes any sense is because <laughs> the, it's made using free invisible internet videos. So it's That's just, true. Um, as you can tell, uh, up at noon, uh, live at five, uh, sometimes ish is, uh, your weekly, uh, variety show here at IGN. It's a catch all for all things, news, pop culture, and things that, uh, you know, everyone else at IGN, they're too busy to really focus on. So they have we, more we like, common sense than us. That's yes. The, yeah. That's the real, yeah. They understand SEO. They like views, uh, popularity, you know, all those things. And so we put, we push all of those things aside to talk about some of the big news that's hitting all over the internet this week. Um, Max, it's a very spooky time of year. And you know it what really, that means? It truly is. It really is. Yeah. Some would say it's the scariest time of the year. That's a good, that's a good noise. That wasn't a scare. That was a sad, that was an embarrassment. So um, if you haven't looked at a calendar in a while, and if you haven't, I don't blame you because it's been a weird year. Um, October is upon us. And that means Halloween, costumes, trick-or-treating, Halloween parties. Just kidding. A lot of that stuff's perfect. A lot of that stuff's not really happening this year. But there is a really cool way you can celebrate uh, a spooky time of year using one of the spookiest gangs of characters in, I would say, pop culture history, and that is the Scooby-Doo gang. Scooby-Doo has been enthralling audiences for literal decades, and the fine folks at Playmobil are making a suite of new products celebrating Scooby-Doo, a bunch of which we were sent. And we uh, both really, really love. So we're going to talk about them, unbox them, play with them. Um, for, for clarity, Scooby-Doo was the first vinyl record I ever owned in my entire life. I had a Fisher-Price turntable. Um, and it was just awesome. So Scooby-Doo, if you don't know about it, it's, a, it's sort of a gang of, of teenagers that go around with a talking gang. dog. Is this an organized crime show? I've never seen it. What's it about? You've never seen Scooby Doo? What is it? It's it's an anime, right? It's a popular anime about organized crime. Is that? Um, it's a popular anime about organized ghosts and disorganized teenagers who try to find them and uh, get rid of them, but also make the situation better than uh, it was when they showed up. You know, I've never really explained Scooby Doo before. It's not, <laughs> it's so, not, here's the thing that really, that really, I never understood about Scooby Doo. It seems really odd to me that that Fred and Daphne hang out with Scooby and Shaggy. Why? Because they're they're deadbeats. Because they're like one one is a talking dog and the other is, well, he's best friends with a talking dog. And I like, I mean, there's the, the he's like a you know he's just a. He goes in the kitchen and makes a bunch of sandwiches. You know what I'm trying to say. But Fred's yeah. got his he's got his ascot. Daphne is like they they look like they're going to the debutante ball. No, Bella's I'm kind of in the middle there. She's sort of like I feel like she could hang out with either group, you know, like she's there to do Daphne's homework so that she and Fred can go on adventures. Or at the same time, I feel like she's the type who would have a crush on Shaggy despite him being a wreck of a man. But I, I, I agree with you. Um it's definitely a uh like a, a, a you know a, a high school ish cast. Um, I would say if you like kit bashed a bunch of like cafeteria tables together in high school, made everyone sit together, or picked one from each team, they'd all be hanging out. They're kind of, um, yeah, they're kind of a proto Breakfast Club, or like the you know all the kids on like a slasher film, but it's they're proto they're they're pre Breakfast Club pre slasher. It's just kind of an yeah. odd like gaggle. Either way. Of Either way, they, they uh, all drive around in a car together, which, you know, we don't actually know if they bought this car, if they leased this car, if this is one of their dad's car. But it's called the Mystery Machine. I would say it's one of the most iconic vans in pop culture history. Um, and so this is the new Mystery Machine toy set. Uh, it comes with a couple of Playmobil figurines. Um, notably, it comes with Fred, who is, I believe, like, uh, usually the driver um and also daphne and velma and then tons of like snacks and uh ghost stuff and just really fun toys and stuff yeah, like they that got, so, like sodas there's this whole thing in the back it's kind of it's it's hard to see we might have video of it but it's like basically a, it's like one of those overhead projectors that teachers used to use or that thing that i guess really it's a thing that nobody uses anymore either way it's either the thing that doctors used to use to hang up x-rays on you know like yeah the, like, yeah translucent stuff but so there you go, right? Over, but yeah. yeah. 
So um, the the van itself has like a bunch of really cool action features. The back door is open. It's got that aforementioned you know uh, thing that Max talked about. It's also got this like weird little ghost gun, um, as well as a sliding door on the side which opens up, and like lots of snacks which I love. And so we uh, grabbed the Shaggy and the Scooby from a different set and put them together here because you need to get the whole gang together here. And so what I really like is there are these drink holders in the front. Um, that have these little sort of cartoon uh, sodas that they can hold or cups they got from a fast food place. Um, Max, you and I were texting each other about this about this car because it's awesome. Like it feels like ve it's very 90s like yeah, action figure. We both, we both grew up with like Playmobil stuff, but this feels more like a like a Kenner vehicle playset than that, which is which is kind of kind of fun. Um, yeah. And if you're like, why are these adult men talking about you know these like children's toys, which they definitely are. It's it's because mind your business. Yeah, go about go yeah. your life. Stay mind out of your it. business. Yeah, seriously. It's also like you know it's it's twenty twenty. Get into toys. You all your hobbies don't have to be shared everywhere. Yeah, what You're am I gonna do? Am I gonna go to a Halloween party? Am I gonna go to the <laughs> movies? No, I'm not. I cannot have these things. So I will play with the German yeah. children's toys. So I actually I really love this door on the side. The way it opens up, very very seventies van. Uh, the roof opens up too. Uh, the orange seats on the inside there that you see they they fold down for no particular reason. I mean just because it's cool because like seventies vans do that. And uh, it's got a couple of other seats there too. Um, the one thing it's missing is I remember like on the cartoon it had like the sort of the cartoon exhaust on the back. Um, and here it's got more of a hitch, you know, where you can connect it to something. I wonder if they're going to get like weird Scooby-Doo jet skis that they can tow around. God, I hope so. Like a um, tiny house so they can go and, you know, go to Burning Man or whatever. So yeah, this set this set will run you around 50 bucks. Uh, it's available right now. It's It's sturdy. It's sleek. It's really awesome and really fun and it's just like a really good time to pile all the uh Sco scooby-doo gang into here um i will say some some caveats to that uh the the women velma and daphne have these sort of like plastic skirts that need to be clipped on and so you have to remove them to make them drive the car um which is a little odd, but that's okay. And then Shaggy's pants are too baggy to to drive, but I actually I actually think that's the least of his problems for operating a motor vehicle. So yeah, my big my big hang up here is that he's got he's got cargo pants, which I never <laughs> really saw as being a thing. Can we talk about this ghost? Can we yes. talk? So the ghost is one of the villains. They actually have an entire line of like I think I don't know if they're blind bagged or just sold separately of like individual Scooby Doo villains, all sorts of weird. Colorful characters who you vaguely remember from the cartoon. They were in all the intros yep. and outros, but you can you know that like some of them are gardeners and some of them are like you know weird accountants who decided to embezzle stuff and then do fraud. And they always this, got this one. Off, but. This one specifically is in a like a smaller kit with uh, Scooby and Shaggy and a, and a bunch of accessories. He comes, like a, the, he comes with this rope. It comes with this rope that's got like a hook on it, and I don't know if that's for him to like swing from rafters and pretend he's a ghost. But let's yeah. talk about this horrible man. <laughs> because like, I remember these guys were always, this guy looks like, uh, I don't know, like a roadie for ABBA. Like this guy looks like a, re he's a real, he's got, so he's got black hair, a brown mustache, and then bright orange chest hair. And he's wearing what I can only describe as some sort of Greek d disco shirt. And then he's yeah. got like sil silver, silver Crocs, maybe. I mean, they're, they're, they're really just Playmobil shoes, but they're, they're silver. So in, in traditional Scooby-Doo fashion, I think it's like they introduce you to like human characters who you immediately mistrust. There he is, yeah. He, and looks, so, like, he looks like a problem. And I say this as a <laughs> pointy-haired man with a Hawaiian shirt on. Yeah, I mean, this guy is definitely like, I thought he was a doctor at first, and I was like, oh, I don't know what kind of doctor stuff you would be doing. Um, but yeah, that kit is also sold separately. You can buy that. I think like the, the cool thing about this stuff is that like the, it's, 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 that sort of traditional Playmobil aesthetic where the the more you get together, the more you build out the gang. I kind of wish there was like one definitive set that had the entire Scooby-Doo gang in it. Now you're making me question every time I say gang. They don't do like, they stop crime. They don't start crime. They're not like a bad gang. They're a good gang. Um, but anyway, at, at the end of the day, every gang loves to <laughs> hang out in uh, like a house or a hideout or some sort of mysterious mansion. And so we will move on to, um, I will say probably one of my favorite play sets I've seen since I was a little kid. Uh, this is the Scooby-Doo mystery mansion right here. And so this is a just fantastic, just total throwback uh, to a lot of the toy sets I had when I was a kid, like you know the the Wayne Manor from the Batman toys, the uh, the 
the firehouse from the Ghostbusters, all that fun stuff. And so here it is in all of its glory. This is $100, and it's just packed with action features front door opens up it's got this like cool little you know uh lantern on the top uh and then you spin it around and you can see there's like a little secret doorway there so we'll get into that in a second it's really it's yeah it's a play set man it's like I'm, yeah I'm, i don't know this is the kind of crap we grew up with and i'm happy with this and now before people are like who are the, who, why are these adult men talking about this you have you have a young child who's actually getting to appreciate this the way it's meant to be appreciated you want to talk about how a human baby interacts with this ghost house. So uh, my my kid is uh, around uh, a little over two years old, and she is obsessed with this toy. This is I realized her first dollhouse is haunted, which is <laughs> sort of hilarious. But you're gonna, I mean, have a, you're gonna have a goth daughter. I just I want you to know <laughs> that now she's gonna be so, real goth. So the cool thing about that is, is uh, uh, you know, she got really in a Scooby Doo this year when Scoob came out. You know, it went uh, because of everything happening this year, it went right to home video, and so she's been playing with all the toys in here. Now, what's cool about this, like I said, tons of action features. The windows open up, you know, as as you can see over that? there. Why does it say no, no, and that has pictures of onions? That sounds. Like that it sounds might like be. A I think it's. It's. I think it's garlic, Max. They're trying to keep. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm, they're trying to keep. Their... I'm stupid. I'm yeah, a this, dumb man. <laughs> this is the vampire's house. They're trying to keep it the safe. Scariest thing about this house right here is that Let's it, do it very visibly has black mold. You can see it. It's so bad. It's on the outside of the house. I don't even want to see the bathroom window sills. That is gonna. You're gonna get. You're gonna get lung problems. Bad yeah, allergies yeah. From that. So those are. That's actually a set of stickers that you can put on that felt very uh, sort of like. Bandai snap together model kit or like a Gundam or something like that. So here we have some of the cool accessories that come with it. Um, this vampire that comes with some fish you can make him hold. Push Fred out of the chair while he's just, reading. Just, his I want to clarify favorite. here: this isn't a real vampire because they don't exist in Scooby Doo. This is in fact a member of the local Rotary Club who has been. Uh, he was appointed treasurer and he's been swindling money that's supposed to be spent on the local teens and their yes. adventure. It's yeah, no. Yeah, there's also, as you can see, like there's tons of accessories. There's that chandelier up top. There's a ladder that you can put like a, there's a little like belfry up there with some bats hanging where you can put some like luggage or some old vases. Um, there's also uh, a stairwell, which does some really cool stuff. It, like I said, some action features. And so pulling this back and forth will actually make the stairs appear and then drop down. I love that we keep showing the video of Fred getting knocked down on the chair. Um, this, this, is, this is my two-year-old's favorite thing, is putting a toy on top of the steps, pushing this, and having yeah, because that it's character hilarious. fall down. It's really funny. And also, they, might get, they would get sued. Yeah. There's also this very uh, sort of like vintage Mighty Max revolving door here, which I love, and a trap door up top, which is also really cool. Um, there's also a uh, chimney, which you can fill. Here we go. This is where it gets there we dumped. go. Yeah, there shaggy. we go. Oh, shaggy. Um, there's a that's, chimney see, that that's you what can... Shaggy claims happened. I think that that the Greek fisherman with the mustache gave him a bunch of Sambuca shots in the kitchen, <laughs> and then he just lost his balance on his big cargo pants. Definitely, definitely possible. Um, and so uh, this set is out right now. It's a hundred dollars. Yeah, we, one thing I don't know if we if we got footage of is the uh, chimney. You can fill with bones and human remains and uh, pull a little sliding door out, and they will dump into the fireplace as some of the characters are hanging out, See, that's roasting the hot dogs. That's the Scooby-Doo story I want to see. Is like there's the old house where there's the guy who's basically doing some totally like petty crime, but it also happens to be where a serial killer has been stashing bodies, and so they mm -hmm. bust this dude for doing you know something dumb like trying to scare off people, trying to buy a mansion, and then they're like they wind up arresting him for like the murders of like seventeen people. And he's like, no, I swear to God, I was, I was, I was just trying to commit insurance fraud. I, I don't know anything <laughs> about these torsos. And they're like, all right, that's you tell your story, walking buddy. Let's this, get you in the van. This is one thing I wanted to point out. It's, it's, it's riddled with like animals. There's bats and uh, spiders. There's a cat that just comes with a garbage can, like full of bones. It's, it's, it's a really good time. You also you um, forgot one of the best things, which is also really handy this time of year, especially if you have to do Zoom yes. calls for work. There's this coffin, which is used as like, a, first of all, the, all these sets come with little tiny plastic uh, files, which have like, trans, they're transparent. It's really hard to show this off on a video, but they have like little stickers you put on there. They're basically little overhead projections, like, you, you know, your math teacher had in seventh grade, if you're old. Um, now they probably just use a normal digital projector. But anyway, 
it you push a button and you can like shine this light and it, it'll basically project whatever the thing is in there. But more importantly, it has cool sound effects. That's what that's the noise that plays in my head when I read the comments on our videos. Uh, but it also has the classic. That's a great. That's when you're running away from something that's yeah. No, that's, that's the sound of fear, my friend. I actually really like the creaking door noise. This is a good one. What? Did it work? <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. No. So the, my problem with that is that it knocks first, which is less creepy because then I'm just like, oh, that's just a normal creaky door. I have like several <laughs> of those in my house. Um, this is this is like the best thing to have at 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 this time of year. Just so yeah, there, like, there you can see. Right, hold on, I gotta take this call. It's a bunch of crows. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh no way! You don't. Somebody spilled popcorn all over the Safeway parking lot. That sounds delicious. Well, I'll talk to you guys later. Anyway. I keep getting witches keep calling me. So anyway, yeah, this is the Scooby Doo Mystery Mansion. It's a hundred dollars. It's got uh, tons of stuff going on for it. I really, really like these toys. I hope they keep making them. I saw they did some, like, like you were saying before, some packs of monsters and stuff like that. Um, build out that whole universe. That's great. When I was a little kid, uh, as a you know second generation European immigrant, the Playmobil company was like one of my favorites in the world. Um, and I had a castle set, and like building that out and playing with it was super fun. And so I'm really happy to see these guys just continue to make just weird stuff like this, especially, you know, we, we've talked about the Back to the Future stuff before, the Ghostbusters stuff before. Um, they're really killing it this year. So they're doing a lot I of great stuff. Get, I hope they get the Alien license. I want Alien Ooh. Ghostbusters. Alien <laughs> that be, that so would be very, very good. Like they should, Lego should do this. And Lego has this rule about like no overtly violent toys and like nothing based on like R-rated properties. And Playmobil is like, Anyway, here's a SWAT team. Like here's yeah. the TSA, like you know, X-ray checkpoint. And I'm yeah, like, we didn't really talk about this, but the but the vampire in the set comes with a revolver. Yeah, it also comes with a little piece you could put in Scooby's hand, so you give you get the dog to hold the gun, which is <laughs> just so threatening. Anyway, we should stop talking about Playmobil because some some somebody in cargo pants in the chat is real mad at us. Uh, can we talk about the about the video games? Can we talk about the yes. video games where the punching and the kicking happens? Okay, Let's so today we got a brand new trailer for Yakuza Like a Dragon, aka Yakuza 7, but more importantly, a brand new Yakuza game, which is something I'm very excited about. It's something that you should be very excited about if you just sat through us talking about Playmobil Scooby-Doo for like 18 minutes or however long that was. Specifically because this is the first trailer that I think accurately portrays how weird and silly and over-the-top these games are. Um, there are always this weird mix of like, there's very heavy, serious, dramatic like crime drama that happens. And then there's also totally bonkers, weird nonsense, just like side quests that also happen <laughs> and like silly activities and karaoke and just like, and it it's, we've never gotten a trailer that I'm, I, I don't think that's been mostly focused on the sort of like fun and upbeat goofy side of things. But the thing that this trailer is uh, establishing is <laughs> that's out the gate. It's just going, it's going crazy there. Uh, the thing that's really great is it establishes the main character, Ichiban Kasuga, is a gigantic weeaboo. Like he is, well, I guess he's not a weeaboo, he's an otaku, because it's a Japanese game. He, but if he lived in America, he'd be a weeaboo. Anyway, the point is, he is a huge fan of Dragon Quest, which is a, a game that's published not by Sega, but they got the rights to talk about Dragon Quest in this game. And so this is a story about a man who's involved in the deep, you know, Tokyo criminal underworld. But he's also obsessed with JRPGs, and so he frames everything in that way. Which that's ins that's insane that they were able to pull that off and like sort of bring those worlds together. Yeah, and it's also like you get the there's a mini game where you have to stay awake in the movies. There's one apparently about answering. There's go oh cards. There's like this is just I'm I'm so excited for this game. Like I really like I've been sort of like I love the, I love the Yakuza series. I feel like this one is going to be very much no hold like no holding back like they're mm -hmm. like they've had ones that are sort of like like judgment is more of like an adventure game um it's kind of like trying to introduce new characters and tell like a serious you know detective story and the the yakuza series kind of gets they go it gets silly and stuff but like i think this one is going to be noticeably sillier than previous entries and i'm like really dying to see what that's like and also they've got um They've got a dub this time around. They've got a um, English voice cast, which we did oh, wow. interview George Takei at the over Comic Con about that, and he's yeah. playing one of the characters. Which also means that they had to localize karaoke, 
which has got to be a pain <laughs> in the ass. Uh, I think what's like really cool about this, like you were saying, like it, they, these these shows, these movies are always like very goofy, or these games. I'm sorry, very goofy on, on, in the underlying, right? But like uh, on on the surface level, they are sort of like you know big crime action open world games. Um, but they're being very overt about celebrating the weirdness of these games now, and I think it's because they're so deep in this franchise. This is what the mm. sixth or seventh one of these now at this well, point apparently like Yakuza has had this weird surge of popularity thanks to people posting like tiktoks of some of the songs from karaoke in that game like there's this and like it's weird because i'm i'm like i love these games i'm terrible at rhythm games so i don't really mess with the karaoke side of things but there's this like song called like uh baka baka me tai and it's like there's these very heartfelt like serious love songs and they're like re they're like not like you know this this trailer is all in like electric guitar solos and like ass rock but like they have like these like ballads <laughs> that like the characters sing and they get like they're in the videos they're like you know there's like six i like hear you playing a yak like a, a ukulele i almost said yak yak is a ukulele a <laughs> yakulele <ukulele. laughs> it's, it's just like i don't know i think people are finally getting like like this i got into this this series because of weird gifts i saw on twitter and I'm glad I did because it's exactly once you kind of scratch the surface, it is exactly as weird as any of the weird memes and gifs and stuff you see. But this trailer is like finally being like just hitting you over the head with like exactly how strange and silly that is. So I'm I love I love that. No, the, um, the idea of this of this game like selling itself by like having weird viral clips and little memes that bring in the uninitiated is is genius. I'm totally no, into that. It's a, it's a good thing. It also, like I don't know, I don't think any of us really want to focus on super serious stuff this year it's been a rough year like let's get let's get silly let's get heartfelt for sure um, so speaking of things that sega is releasing uh here's one of the weirder things we've seen that that wonderful deluge of of uh, retro consoles re-released in smaller formats the game gear micro is upon us and yeah. it is really little it's a it's tiny little guy it's really, really tiny. Okay, so um, like you said, Max, we've had uh, the NES Mini, the SNES Mini, the PlayStation Classic, um, and then a bunch of other little things like that here and there, right? Even the Genesis did one. Uh, so for Game Gear, we we knew it would probably get shrunk down, uh, but I don't think any of us really anticipated how much. So uh, my friend John Riccardi over at 84 Play uh, lives in Tokyo, uh, where the Game Boy or the Game Gear Micro just dropped in I believe four or five different flavors. Um, got his hands on one of these because they haven't actually been released here yet. I don't actually don't even know when they're coming here. Uh, but you can order these right now on Amazon Japan and get them shipped to America if you want one. They're 50 bucks each. And by each, I mean, there are actually like four different flavors and each one of them has four games on it. Oh, there's, there's so, five. There's a, there's oh, a so yeah. translucent one too. There's a translucent one. So um, there's, is this a very different approach than we've seen from a lot of the micro consoles before? Um, this is more like a collect them all type thing, which is interesting because they're 50 bucks each. And also the Game Gear doesn't really have the best library. So let's start off here. Here's John showing off his uh, Game Gear micros in the, in, in the wild. That's it against a VMU. So VMU... Uh, for the sake of Dreamcast, historically one of the tiniest screens you could possibly play a video game on. Right? Yeah, that was a glorified memory card that you could play Chow Garden on. Like that. Yes. Was yeah. Cool you idea, know, it, but also not really. That was a Tamagotchi more than it was a handheld. Yeah. No. So if you look at the D-pad on these two things, um, pretty similar in size. The buttons are oversized on the Game Gear. They were always kind of big on the original Game Gear, but the screen itself is tinier than on the VMU. Yeah. Hold on, I'll back this up. This one's got the side-by-side -side, side shot with the batteries. Are those yeah. AAA or AA? Those are AA batteries. And so, fun fact, the original Game Gear took six AA batteries, and 30-something years later, we've made it to the point where we are down to two AA so, batteries. It's, good God. So it's like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny. And so there it is against the Nintendo Switch. Um, Nintendo Switch, obviously, you know, some people, I don't think anyone's really been like, that's got a tiny screen. I know with oh the Switch God. Lite, some people had some questions, so but that's, that's it. Just sitting, it just looks like an icon in a game. The box itself, there it is compared to Breath of the Wild that John put together. Um, really, really interesting. We actually have I a couple more comparison box. shots. Cute. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah. Oh! So, yeah, so, so yeah, there's that. Um, a, a lot of, a, obviously, a lot of people in Japan are grabbing this right now. That is comically small, like keychain small. 
Like that is so hey, that is the thing, man. You said it yourself, the game gear doesn't have the best game library, but if the no. screen is that small, you can't tell. You can't tell. Yeah, you can't tell. And so like here's man. what I wanted to see. This is the yeah. thing I wanted. I wanted to see compared to a Game Boy Micro. Yeah, so on the left here we have uh, Yuji Naka, who's you know famous developer at, at Sega, has been making classic games for ages. And on the right we we have uh, a picture of it next to the Game Boy Micro, which you know I have one of those, Max. I believe you have one of those too. That is uh, the smallest handheld Nintendo's ever made, comically small. Uh, we got Shaquille O'Neal to hold it once. He got mad like, at you. He yeah, got mad he at you. When he grabbed you by the top of the head and went like that and rattled your yeah. brain. Yeah, he he almost gave me you know uh, a, a migraine for two or three days. It's smaller than that, and so like it's really hard to explain how tiny this thing is. Like if you, like if you, if you if you look up the screen resolution of this thing, it is basically like two and a half postage stamps. Mm -hmm. And so, can you play Sonic on that? Maybe. Should you? Maybe not. Um, one thing I didn't get a picture of is they actually sell a magnifier for this thing, which is like the original old school handhelds, like a little clip on thing to make the screen bigger. So just so, comical. I mean, I think this is the direction gaming is going. We've we've hit we've hit 4K HDR. <laughs> it's like huge screens. It's exciting, but it's also so expensive to develop for. So now we've got people who are like, you know, they're they're hacking their keyboards or their pregnancy tests to run doom or minecraft or whatever like we got yeah. a guy who, who got doom running on a pregnancy test that's a thing that's not a screen at all that's to tell if you're gonna have a child or not and hopefully if you're <laughs> playing doom on the pregnancy test it says no because that's <laughs> <laughs> priorities so the good this, news is yeah, this, is a, this the, is a little little thing this is called the game gear micro which i guess leaves the door open for them to make a game gear mini one day that's like you know half scale like, because if it's half the size, then maybe you can make something smaller. You know, maybe it doesn't use any batteries at all. Um, I think there's so, another alternative, which is in, like, so I'm a huge proponent of the Game Boy Micro because I think it's the it's the Game Boy SP was cool, but it didn't have the wonderful form factor of the original Game Boy Advance, and that was just they shrunk it down and had a rechargeable battery and a backlit screen. It was all of the best parts of both worlds. It was wonderful. I think it's great. It's small, but it's also manageable. In the same breath, I will say the Sega Nomad is one of the best uses of, I guess you'd call that backwards compatibility in a sense. Like that was right. a handheld the size of the Game Gear that came out that played every single Sega Genesis game after the Sega Genesis was kind of declining. And again, it used like 18 AA batteries, so it wasn't really sustainable. But if you had an AC adapter, it was pretty cool. So what if they do the Sega Nomad Mini and it's just like a little handheld the size of a Game Boy Micro but you you load it with everything that was on the Genesis Classic. How cool would that be? Yeah, and I will point out, Max, you're what six foot four five. five? I, was, I was six last year, but down to four this year. I think it's. I've. Did you? Are you shrinking? Or I'm, is, I'm probably shrinking. That's okay. But I will point out. Away, I'm not sure. What <laughs> you're you're a very you're a very tall man, and you have I would say like long gangly salad fingers. And so for you <laughs> to love the game, the, the Game Boy Micro. Um, I, was, then, I was great in Pan's Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. If, for you to love that system, it shows it's, it's, it's definitely playable. I, I have mine. I love mine. You know, I'm not as tall as you, but okay, you know, so I'm a big fan of it. Perfect way to line up a wonderful segue here. While we're talking about little tiny things from Japan. Let's talk about really big things from Japan. Let's talk about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a cool minute here. Uh, this has not been a good year. If you think it's been a good year, you have brain problems and you're sick in the head, and I don't want you to watch videos that I'm in anymore, so please go do something else. That being said, one good thing that has come out of this year is the life-size Gundam that's being built in Japan, in Tokyo. This was in honor of the Olympics, which were supposed to happen, but much as predicted in the wonderful anime Akira, the Neo Tokyo is about to explode, and so we don't get the Olympics. That being said, the giant life-size RX-78 II being built at uh, Odaiba Shopping Mall Center, Diver City, whatever, the Gundam factory area is underway. This is a moving, semi-functional, actual, full-scale Gundam mobile suit. And it's so cool. And it's the it's one of the only... Like, I'll go on Twitter, and I mostly want to kill myself when I look at what's on Twitter. However... <laughs> Every week or so, somebody posts an update on this thing, and they're like, great news, 
the Gundam is pointing its finger. Like it's getting up, they're moving its legs around, they're making it walk. This thing has been slowly in the works for you know months and months. And the whole point of it was to celebrate the Olympics and get people excited about you know Japan and also like recognize Japan's incredible robotics industry and also sick ass anime and model kits and all the great stuff that comes out of there. But they're building a they're built a goddamn life-size Gundam, and it's so good, and it makes me so happy, and it's so great. Uh, this isn't the first time they built a life-size Gundam, full disclosure. A lot of people know this, um, but it actually really makes me feel better because I went to Japan for the first time in 2014, and it was like a once-in-a-lifetime thing, wound up being not once-in-a-lifetime. We'll see where the, what the future holds, but previously, they in the same area, they used to have uh, a life-size Gundam with the same model, the original Grandpa RX-78, uh, and it didn't, it didn't move. It was like a, it was a static statue. It basically, it would light up and it would shoot steam out of it or whatever. And it was cool. It, played noises. <laughs> it was a cool statue. Um, when I went in 2014, I was like, I went and did as many things as I possibly could. I ran all over the city and got to check all sorts of stuff out. I bought way too many Gundams. And then I was like, it was like the last day I was there. And the, the thing about Odaiba is it's like off the beaten path a little bit. It's like kind of, it's, it's sort of between Tokyo and the airport. It's kind of like mm -hmm. you know, off the one side. And my friend and I were like, should we go check out the big Gundam? We should go to the airport early. Like, we don't want to miss our flight. We should be safe about that. You never know how much of a headache that's going to be. In hindsight, that was a good call because if we'd gone to see the Gundam, this would have been, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, but I was heartbroken because they took down the RX-78 and they replaced it with the Gundam Unicorn, which is the newest, most recent Gundam Hero Mobile suit, which a lot of people like. I'm, I am not fond of it. I'm not one to, to enjoy it. I like the classics. I like the old school stuff. Uh, and so they put in this big new one, which is cool. And I was like, I went to Tokyo for my honeymoon two years ago. And my wife was like, do you want to go see the big Gundam? And I was like, I don't want to see the Gundam unicorn. I want to see the RX-78. I want to see Grandpa. I want to see the original Gundam. And Which which means he was in a, a in like a storage facility somewhere, right? Which is cool. So yeah, you can't really hide it. I don't know what you do with that, but... <laughs> The good news is they made an even better Gundam, and I'm so excited about that, and it makes me so happy. Um, I've been into Gundam since it like first showed up. I guess Gundam Wing was first exposure. I don't, I don't love Gundam Wing, but then the other Gundam stuff, and I, I don't know. I built, I, I built, still built Gundams. I built this one last weekend. Like it, it just, it, I'm, I'm gonna be stuck in my house building little model plastic robots. But the idea that at some point, if everything gets even slightly a little bit better, maybe I'll get a chance to get on an airplane and fly over to Tokyo and see this amazing actual functional moving mobile suit. That's like a little glimmer of hope, which is I think the thing we all need right now. And so I just wanted to talk about the big moving robot, which is great. No, that Max, that absolutely rules. I saw, I saw the RX-78 with Mitch Dyer in 2015 and it didn't move. Uh, but I will point out Odaiba is one of the most surreal places I've been in my entire life. They have a small scale Statue of Liberty facing a bridge that definitely isn't you know, uh, the, the George Washington Bridge or the Brooklyn Bridge or anything like that. And so you definitely have this moment where your head's spinning around. And you're like, where am I? But there is a giant Gundam there. He's huge and imposing or was there, um, but he didn't move. And he just kind of stood there next to this like closed mall, which was weird. And then there's like a park where a bunch of like tourists go with like a little lake. Yeah, and it's, they, it's like they had a thing where at like twilight they would just light up the Gundam and it would make like a bunch of noises and like, and then it would like shoot smoke out of its ass or whatever. And you just mm -hmm. go, there it is there. It's doing its thing. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's, that looks like it. I don't know. It finally paid its electricity bill and they're like, all right, you can have the power back on or whatever. But the new one, it does, it does finger stuff. It does leg stuff. It's great. It I don't think it <laughs> walks, but it, like it works. So I don't know. That's something to be happy about. Um, that's true. God damn. Um, Everybody loves a good finger stuff. And speaking of which, <laughs> you can play a brand new version of Pac-Man everywhere cigarettes are sold right now. <laughs> um, so Pac-Man has actually teamed up with the uh, Scratcher lottery tickets uh, here in California and probably elsewhere. Uh, you have to be 18 to even check the website to find out more inf information about this. But there's advertisements for them all over uh, San Francisco, all over major metropolitan areas. Um, Pac-Man is now a uh, scratchable uh, card game, where which is basically scratch off lotto. Uh, and going to the website, you can try it out, which I don't know what that's that purpose that? is for. It's what, weird, yeah, that's, right? That's like a, I feel like they should just put a... a th there's also this really weird commercial they put out where it's like, I think it plays like the uh, Simple Minds Breakfast Club theme. 
and all these yeah. adults go in and they're wearing 80s clothes and they buy scratchers and then which is just like i don't know like i don't you know i don't want to knock people who buy scratchers like i'll get like a you know powerball ticket now and then but this is definitely yeah. not the best look like if this i don't I, this is this is cute but it's not really making me like this isn't being like hey you're gonna win a bunch of money which is i think sort of the point this is more like okay they're gonna they're all right they're bringing so, oh, they're bringing quarters i get it like the arcade what's weird about this is there's like a bunch of bus ads for this and they all have um different things like get your quarters ready which is a smart that's a smart thing to say because it's like you had to put quarters in the original game you need a quarter with a ridge edge to scratch off a scratch off ticket got it there's also other ones that are like waka waka winning ticket which are oh. not as smart we got a, we got some pictures of them right here which yeah. you can see they look like pac-man i don't know what to tell you that's this yeah this so there's a bunch of expect. different like uh, i guess like most um gambling addictions uh there's a bunch of different tiers that you can do here i actually don't know if we're legally allowed to show you this screenshot um because you have to be 18 to see this it was behind oh, yeah, a, huh? a you know like a you had a you had to tell a website that you were 18. Uh, oh, right. well, let's, we should probably move on. Anyway, we don't condone or endorse gambling in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we we often, you know, we we'll, we'll get mad about EA doing that. Don't show it again. Put that, get that <laughs> out of here. We got to hide that. Let's talk about a much more wholesome thing that Pac-Man is doing lately. I guess we talk about dolls on this show. Screw it. Let's get to it. Uh, it another, another thing that Pac-Man has partnered with that I never thought we would be discussing on this fine show is <laughs> American Girl. Which is if there's a if there's an opposite to scratchers, I think it's American Girl. Yeah, if, like if a there's a paper that you can you can desperately scrape with a penny in hopes of winning money, has an yep. opposite. I think it's a hundred and fifty dollar doll, or specifically a yeah. hundred and fifty dollar Pac Man cabinet made to work with a doll of Courtney. And so That's, there's a there's a lot going on here. This is I guess Court no. Keep in mind, Max and I know a ton about toys. We know almost nothing about American Girl. You know, I know that I, they're like they're expensive. They're like yes. I think they're the modern version of those like old Victorian like porcelain dolls that only like the little rich girls with corsets would have or whatever. Yeah, and so like most dolls, they have you know you can exchange their accessories and clothes and stuff like that, shoes and in bags and such. Um, they, do, they, they usually try to do it to teach history, where there's like this is they're like this is this is Deborah. She grew up in the Dust Bowl and you can yeah. tell because she wears hoop skirts and like gr little girls are supposed to learn about that, but they like probably secretly were just like, I wish I got a Barbie instead. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so this is a, uh, this is Courtney's trademark Pac-Man trademark arcade game. So I'm, I understand that Courtney is a, apparently they're sort of they're maybe they're GI Joe or are they Optimus Prime? I'm not sure. I think this is Courtney is the American girl they use to teach children about the Reagan era. I don't. Okay, fair yeah. enough. And so uh, Courtney has a bunch of different like clothes that you can buy that are all 80s themes. Uh, but she comes with a fully playable Pac-Man arcade game. No, so, so I this... think you have to buy it separately. Like this is where it gets to be. What? Let's, let's, hold on. Let's check out the website here. Like let's the go. The microtransaction. Exactly. <laughs> They're selling cosmetics to children. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Wait, so this is a hundred. Oh, I think you're right, Max. Yeah, so this is a hundred. I, man, now I want this. So I don't want Courtney, but I want the arcade game. Yeah, okay, this is $150 this oh, yeah. playable. Okay. Yeah, here so here, here she is. You got the different. It's an actual <laughs> arcade cabinet, which is kind of dope. And honestly, as an adult man, I sort of want one. Um, when you scroll down and look at this. They're doing all, they're selling all these different, pay, like the doll and book is $110. What is this? And it, like I like we joke about how this is a show where two adult men talk about pictures of dolls, but now we're straight up looking at the American Girl website. So we're on a list. Uh, I love that you can you can buy a, a cardigan and like a a, a tie dye shirt. Um, but oh, dude, also, okay. So the whole thing is they're trying. It's is teaching girls who code. It's like the this is about this is Courtney who loves. It's like trying to it's, Courtney changes the game. Like they're trying to you know inspire. Mm -hmm women to pursue like tech careers or whatever but also but i do like this right up here courtney loves going to the arcade with her friends to play video games and pac-man is one of her favorites this gnarly arcade game has a working joystick and buttons and plays just like the real thing for the 1980s with authentic arcade sounds at multiple levels ghosts and fruit it has built-in rechargeable battery no quarters needed this is a, this is weird yeah i mean yeah. i guess this is like i remember when i was a kid they would have like They'd be like, oh, this is like an American girl doll that is like wearing a poodle skirt. Like this is from Greece or whatever. And now, you know, 30 years later, or like, you know, 25 years later, it's like, 
here's how you teach children about the 80s, which is history at this point. This is the past. This is the distant past. Like, you know what's deeply upsetting is that I, I feel like we're going to get, maybe, who knows? I don't know where things are going. I feel like we're going to get an Assassin's Creed game that takes place in a time period that we lived through. It's going to be like, <laughs> hop in the Animus and go to the distant past. And we're going to be like, I, I remember 1993. <laughs> That's not... Uh, oh man! Where like like Etios on Internet Explorer, and he's like, I have to find out about my yeah. parents. You got to dial up to go on the Animus. No. Anyway, what uh, a nightmare. Anyway, right. yeah, uh, go go check out AmericanGirl.com. You I don't guess. need to That's go to that website. That's all right. <laughs> and also, if anyone from American Girl is watching, please don't please don't send us these. We don't. It's not okay. It's fine. All right. Well, can we Either. can we talk about some like real like tough guy burly men stuff? Okay, check this out. Um, a long time ago, a famous bounty hunter named Boba Fett fell in a hole called the Sarlacc Pit, and decades later, they made a spinoff show called The Mandalorian. You know how that's a cool name because it has "man" in the title, and that means dudes like us with muscles and uh, beards and stuff. We 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 get it. We don't need to go to AmericanGirl.com. We go to Mandalorian.com. Well, anyway, he flies it's a ship Mandalorian called Mandalorian without Mandal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yes. Yeah, so yes. Hasbro's been doing this thing uh, where they've been, I mean, uh, they've been basically crowdfunding, which yeah. I know people think of crowdfunding as like, how do you fund your like Twee indie game? Uh, and it's like for a massive company with a, you know, one of the most valuable licenses on earth to come out and be like, we want your money to make this thing. This is specifically like a bespoke pre order. And they have yeah. put up the vintage collection, which means, means four inch scale, um, super articulated Star Wars action figures, basically the little, how do I not have any within any arm's reach? Good Lord. The four inch scale figures, basically. Yeah. They're putting so up a $350 version of this, of the Mandalorian ship, the Razor Crest. Uh, this is hot on the tail of the Jabba sail barge, which went up last year, a couple years ago. We've got a mm -hmm. quick little video here. Uh, yeah. And so the cool thing about these is that they are sort of like Kickstarters in that they have stretch goals. But um, this is basically to, sh to save, you know, shelf space. These these boxes are gigantic, and so I, I see some people roll their eyes at the idea of a, a company like this doing this. Like Max said, this is them basically, you know, looking for interest in something that's outside of the usual consumer grade stuff that you would walk into a store and yeah, buy. Yeah, we, we had Todd McFarlane on the show months ago to talk about how he's like kickstarting a Spawn figure, and you know, he explained that like that, like if you went to Walmart and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm going to sell like a fifty dollar seven inch action figure people would be like get the get out of here nobody wants that but like mm -hmm. some people do want that we're some of those people here is a 350 dollars mandalorian spaceship they're showing us the inside of it here it's obviously authentic and detailed and everything it's still in a prototype phase they haven't actually built the thing but like you're getting an idea of what's what's in here and it oh i want it so bad oh, it's really really it. awesome so good. And so some, some things to point out, um, it has the full carbon freezing chamber, which is the entire downstairs of the ship that opens up. Um, there it, it has is. The, the, toilet. the toilet. Yeah, there, let's the, show, show the toilet. What I, I just this, I freaked out and closed this the is, This is the first time in Star Wars toy history that they've made a toilet. Now, hold on. It's not called a toilet. It's called a fresher. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a toilet. It's, it's got a potty on it, you know. Baby Yoda can sit on it. Um, there, there also uh, there's a full like that sort of like weapons rack opens up. Every single one of those weapons comes off, um, and they're doing stretch goals. Like one of them they did recently is the escape pod, where Mando can like kind of pop out in that you know uh, coffin shaped thing and float off into space. <laughs> so that's a good time. Um, this, this, is, this is yeah, three hundred fifty uh, bucks and sold not sold out, but like hit its goals immediately. Um, and so you can still get on board with this if, if you're looking for one. Obviously, you know, Max, biggest Mandalorian Boba Fett you, fan on you the know, planet. I, you know that I love my Boba Fetts. I'm like surrounded. I have literally two boxes of them next to me. I've just got en endless of them. I can't do Mandalorian stuff. It's like a self-preservation thing because they know that this is the most like toyetic show. This is like toys based on the toys based on the toys. Like this is but like i can't i i just i have so many boba fets i have like you got to do it max pull pull on the i don't pull on the, I, pull on the string a little bit no, you know, pull, no, the, pull the string tear open the fabric of the universe and your bank account there's so many of them there's all sorts of them they're just every which way they're just 
Look at this one. He's a little truck. Why do I have this? Why do I? Because I, I don't know. Because I, I, I gave you that. I brought that from. Yeah, I, okay. well, that I brought you that from Japan. <laughs> I can keep doing. That, I can do this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's her. I love that one. That's a. That's a really good one. <laughs> I have like I have like three other Boba Fett's that I pre-ordered. I don't need more Boba Fett's. And I'm like, part of me is like really sort of relieved that this isn't Slave One with Boba Fett stuff. That it is in fact Mandalorian crap because like I'm able to walk away. But if it was like a three hundred and fifty dollar toy spaceship based on a movie that came out forty years ago that had all these dumb details that me and seventeen other dudes care about a whole lot, I'd be like. Ugh. Uh, I gotta spend three hundred fifty dollars on a freaking spaceship. It's stupid, and my wife would yell at me. Um, no, you you'll work it out. Anyway, yeah. uh, this is uh, three hundred fifty bucks. It's on Haslab right now, so go check that out if you're interested in it. It kicks ass. We haven't really seen like the paint ops on it or anything yet. I'm excited to see all that stuff. Like that's gonna obviously come later in production. This has all been sort of like three D renders for now, but it'll give you an idea of what you're working with. For example, like um, if you hold up any sort of four inch scale figure that you own, and then picture them flying a ship like this. You're getting a giant ship. Uh, recently, these yeah, guys did this. this. Yeah, this is this is huge. This, this is, is a huge. This is the scale they normally do, like the Millennium Falcon on. Yeah, I, I would say not even like that well. Like they don't these action figure vehicles usually aren't actually to scale because they, mm -hmm. that would be ridiculously expensive. But no, that I mean they they toyed with a six inch scale Tie Fighter for the Force Awakens, um, and that got clearanced so fast. Because yeah, it was, it was it was literally the size of like a like a coffee table. It's also um, most, like it's the most. They did that before they did a, a land speeder, I think. Yeah, like do it. Yeah, a gif. Like I mean, do like do, no, it was insane. It was insane. They and so they just did a snow speeder, which is a vehicle that can that can seat two people. Instead, they were like Tie Fighter, huge wings, one seat, gray. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's insane. So I, I think that like giant, I think that TIE fighter is part of the reason they started doing HasLab because they were like, hey, instead of having these like small houses on shelves <laughs> that people aren't buying, they got clearance. Like they, those things got knocked down to like 40 bucks at one point. Well, no, and I'm kind I mean, of anecdotally, like I have that 12 inch scale uh, do back that Hasbro put out in probably 2002 or three, I think. Like it's it was, it's it the was, size of a golden retriever. It's, it's it is literally, uh, it is bigger than the size of both my pets combined. It is like, it is a <laughs> massive thing. It came in the box the size of like a mini fridge or a child's coffin. It was just, it's huge. And I got it for less than it cost initially when it was released. Yeah. And that was like 15 years later. And it's because it was in this, like, it's this stinky rubber plastic lizard that was taking up space in some dude's garage. And he's like, get this crap out of here. Like anyway, what yeah, if, there's there's peg warmers, which is you know what they call things that just sort of sit on the sh uh, on the racks for a long time. But then there's like stuff like that that like gets put in the overhead and rots for decades. We and so this this awful flux capacitor googling yeah. thing. This, this um, IUD out of here. Anyway, uh, if you're in into industrial design and engineering and, and sort of like the history of, um, of vehicles and, and the way they do get around the world, you'll be interested to know that um, they're making a Thomas the Tank Engine movie. <laughs> uh, George Miller, who worked on World War Z, Quantum of Solace, big, big tough guy films. And I guess I'll, I'll also, was that Happy Feet or was that the- No, no, that was, that, was the, that was the Mad Max George Miller. Oh, that's right. Okay. Be, so if you if you put a gun to my head and you're like, all right, this guy named George Miller directed some of these movies. He, he made Mad Max. He made Happy Feet. Or you, 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 like I feel like these are these guys are just swapping roles here. Like it's I, it's very weird that the guy who did Happy Feet also did Mad Max, and the guy who did World War Z is also doing Thomas the Tank Engine. Like what's going on there? Gun to my head sounds like a show you would host. Man. Gun to my head. <laughs> If you put a gun to my head. Um, Hi, everybody. Welcome to Gun to My Head. Today we're talking <laughs> about the GPO 3S Stamen. This is the Master Crate. It's the 1 100th scale, and I'm not going to move this. It's actually really pointy. I'm putting it down. <laughs> that was like a really bad end gauge commercial. <laughs> um, so, anyway, they're making a Thomas the Tank Engine movie. Um, if you didn't grow up watching his like bizarre live action or weird CG animated stuff, you've definitely seen him in decades of popular memes. Uh, my favorite is that 
that that being the Biggie Smalls one, where he's just like, they just they just I mean, put a bunch of Biggie <laughs> lyrics over one of his beats. I don't know why he's such a like he's he's everywhere in memes, but also he's everywhere in in the modding community. Like one of the first things yeah. people do when a new game comes out on PC, and they're just like, "All right, Resident Evil Five or Resident Evil Two, like why not? It's going to be Thomas the Tank Engine instead of you know Mr. X. Like you're, it, it's like <laughs> yeah, he busts through walls and stuff like yeah, that. Kool Aid I mean, Man's everywhere. Here's a stupid sentence I'm going to say out loud. I fully understand the compulsion to replace the dragons in Skyrim with Thomas the Tank Engine. On some level, that makes sense to me. Replacing what? Mr. X with Thomas the Tank Engine seems weird. I would love to know why one of those things makes sense to you. <laughs> because they go to the sky, they fly around everywhere. Whereas what are you Mr. talking X, about? It just goes through hallways. Like it's Thomas the Tank Engine doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense either way. It's nonsense no matter how you cut it. I'm just saying one of them is like, it's like more... This is why I put this story here because I knew that none of us had anything normal to say about this film being made. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I hope Thomas gets to meet his girlfriend. Or I don't know anything. But I knew both of us would just sort of go, hey, you know what's fun? When they put Thomas the Tank Engine in Skyrim and GTA. I, I'm like <laughs> legitimately like a little bit heartbroken that George Miller of Mad Max fame is not directing <laughs> a Thomas. Because like, I feel like you could do a Fury Road approach to Thomas the Tank Engine where he's got like, like that's kind of a little engine that could movie. That's about a bunch of they got a truck. It's full of women. They're trying to get to the green place. They trying to go. Then they they got flat tires and stuff. They got people chasing them, but they keep they keep going like that train does in that that does, book. Like I don't know what Thomas the Tank Engine does. I remember that movie with that show was boring. Does he? Does he? Can he live like off of the tracks? Like can he go? Can he move off of the like when he's no? Not on the... I read uh, somewhere in a, a very important book by Doctor Oz that if a train goes off the rails, it's a crazy train and has to be put down. That is true. <laughs> um, well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I believe that this show has been a crazy train yeah, that needs it. to be put down for being off the rails. Uh, we'll be back next week with a slightly more normal, but probably uh, very similarly. Oh, it's going to be stupid, but it's going to be a episode. We'll be actually It'll be live next week. Yeah. I'm sorry that we recorded you the special VHS tape that normally would be a complete waste of tape. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will see you very soon. And for all you Thomas the Tank Engine fans out there, you're the real ones, and we believe yeah. in you. You guys. Also, if you're still watching, what one, why, and also what else would you like to see us cover on this bad program that we make sometimes? Yeah, we're down in the doldrums now, so open up the trap door and release the bats. I don't care. <laughs> what you keep in your chimney? Let us know in the <laughs> comments. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was up at noon live. I'm Brian Altano, that's Max Scoville, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>